Hello, my name is Brandon, and in this video we're going to learn about the standard error of the regression. We'll learn how to use it to evaluate and compare models, and then we'll go into Excel and calculate it by hand. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you perform a best subsets regression, you'll likely get output that looks like this. So this is actually from a software package called JUMP, JMP, which is put out by SAS. When we perform our best subsets regression, in this case we get all of the one feature models, the one variable models, the two variable models, the three variable models, and then the four variable models. And in the columns, we get different measures by which to evaluate each model. We have the R square, we have the RMSE, which is the root mean square error. We have the AIC, the BIC, and Mallow's C. So in this video, we will be examining the root mean square error, which goes by another name, which is the standard error of the regression. So what is it? It's an assessment of the entire model. It's asking how well do the observations fit around the regression line? Or if we're in multiple dimensions, it could be the regression plane or even higher dimensions. But basically, how well do our data points, how well do our observations fit around the regression line? Are they relatively close to the regression line or plane? Or are they scattered away from the regression line or the plane? It's based on this idea of the residual error. So Y sub I is each observation minus the predicted observation based on the regression. It is the difference between the observed value and the predicted value as determined by the regression equation. It is always shown in the unit of the dependent variable. So in this video, we'll be talking about house prices. So the prices are in thousands of dollars. Therefore, the standard error of the regression will also be in thousands of dollars. So always keep that in mind. If you standardize, normalize, transform, or perform some other action on your dependent variable, then the standard error of the regression will be in that unit. So we start by going back to the basic idea of the sum of squared errors, or the SSE. So that is the residual error, which is Y sub I, the observed value, minus the predicted value, Y hat sub I, then we square that difference, and then we add them all up. That is the sum of squared errors, or SSE. Then we have the mean square error, or the MSE. That is the SSE from above, divided by the degrees of freedom based on the error term, so DF sub E. So in the numerator, we just have the SSE that we have up there at the top. In the denominator, for DF sub E, is N minus P minus one. N is the number of observations we have, P is the number of features we have minus one. That is the MSE. So here is the MSE expressed a slightly different way. So we have SSE divided by DF sub E. We had that on the last slide. Then we have the fraction from the last slide. And that is expressed often in books and software packages as S squared sub E. So mean square error can also be expressed this way, S squared sub E. The standard error of the regression is just the square root of the mean square error. So if we take S squared sub E and take the square root, that is the same thing as the square root of the MSE, which is also called the RMSE, which is the root mean square error, which should make sense because we're taking the square root of the MSE. RMSE also equals S sub E. Of course, if we take the square root of S square sub E, we end up with S sub E. And this is sort of a challenge in statistics, as you have probably seen already, is that we often call the same thing three or four different names. So in this case, the square root of the MSE, the root mean square error, and S sub E are all the same thing. And certain software packages will express each one differently. And sometimes the same software package will do different things in, within itself. So it can be very confusing. So let's talk about perfect predictions. So let's say we have some data points here and then we have a regression equation. If the original data is perfectly linear, perfectly linear, then the regression function will predict the exact same points back. It's a tautology, it's self-evident. So in this case, it predicts itself back if the function is purely linear. Now, this is a very extreme case. In real life, it will pretty much never happen, but it's good for educational purposes. Now, in this case, all residuals will be what? Well, they'll be zero because the predicted point and the observed point are the same thing. So the residuals will be zero. 
So in this case, the SSE, of course, is also zero. So all the differences will be zero, square zero is zero, add up all the zeros, we still get zero. So the SSE will be zero. This also means therefore that the MSE will be zero, of course. The standard error of regression will be zero. And then the R square, remember that, will equal one because the sum of squares due to error being zero means all of the sum of squares is due to the regression and that equals the total sum of squares, which is SST. That's why the R square equals one because R square is just SSR or the sum of squares due to regression divided by the SST or the total sum of squares. And in this case, they're the same. So the fraction is actually one. Now, of course, in real life, that's rarely gonna happen. So we have imperfect predictions. So if the original data is not perfectly linear, then the regression function will not predict the exact same points back. Each residual will likely not be zero. It's possible that one of the data points will fall directly on the line, and therefore the residual could be zero or very near zero, but most of them will not be zero. So in this case, there's gonna be a difference between the predicted value that falls on the line and the observed value, which is the open circle. So you can see the difference. That is our residual. So in this case, the SSE will not be zero. Therefore, the MSE will not be zero. And of course, R square will not be one. And this is more like real life. So we're talking about the residuals, which is the difference between the points on the line and the actual observed points, which is the open circle. So in computer output, it will look something like this. And again, this is from jump. Remember that the MSC is the SSC divided by the DFE there at the top. So SSC is sum of squares due to errors. That is the sum of the squared residuals divided by N minus P minus one. And we'll get to that here in a second. And of course the RMSC is just another name for the standard error of regression. So where are we at? DFE equals N minus P minus one. In this case, we have 100 observations in this data set we've been using, which you can download by the way and follow along, minus three variables. We can see that we have three check marks in the entered column there under current estimates, minus one. So that's 100 minus three minus one, which is 96. That's how we get DFE or degrees of freedom for the error term of 96. The mean square error or the MSE, remember, is just SSE divided by DF sub E which is the same thing as S squared sub E, that equals 147815, we can see that under SSC, divided by the DFE, which is 96, that comes out to 1,540. Then we have to take the square root of that to get the standard error of the regression. So the square root of 1,540 equals 39.24, which is the same thing as S sub E, that's the standard error of the regression. And we can see that under the RMSE up there in the right. So that's where all these numbers come from and how we have to sort of pivot when our software packages might call it something different. But in this case, that is where all the numbers come from. So now let's hop into Excel and calculate the standard error of the regression by hand. So here we are in Excel. In column A, we have our dependent variable, which is the price of the home. And then in columns B through D, we have the three variables we are interested in in order to calculate the standard error of the regression. So first thing we're going to do is actually use the data analysis add-in to calculate the summary statistics and the residuals. Then we'll use the residuals to actually calculate back with the output it gives us to kind of double check. It's very simple. We're going to go to data, over on the right, data analysis, that'll open up. And then we wanna use regression. So we'll scroll down to regression, click okay. In the Y range, we want all the values from column A. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in that space, go over to column A. I'm gonna press control shift down. That'll take me down to all the observations. And there we are. Now for the X range, what I need to do is select column B, Control, Shift, right arrow, and then down arrow. Then I'll select all my data there. I do have labels in the first row. Make sure that's selected. I'm gonna put this in a new worksheet, so I'll leave that checked. It's very important here to select residuals. I'm gonna go ahead and select residuals, and that's all I need here for this video. Go ahead and click OK. 
in here as our output. So I wanna make some room so we can see everything. Good enough for now. I think it's all we need. And I'm gonna increase the zoom so we can see everything. There we go. So the important thing here is what's called the standard error. Excel calls this just standard error, but this is the standard error of the regression, which is the same thing as the RMSE, same thing. So make sure you keep track of what we call everything and where you see it in each output. So we're gonna to try to calculate by hand this standard error of the regression. Let's go down here to the residuals. So we need a new column here, and this is residuals squared. Good enough. So of course it's gonna be equal, and then the residual, and then we're going to square it, and there's our residual. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, double click, lower right, that'll fill down. And now we have all of the squared residuals. So this is like the first step in calculating the SSE, or the sum of squares, the SSE, or the sum of squares due to error. So these are all the square residuals. Now, what do we have to do? We need to sum them up. So I'll go to the bottom, and then we can go to Home, Auto Sum, and hit Enter. And there is the SSE, that is the sum of squared errors. So this is the SSE that we calculated. Now, remember we need the DFE, those are the degrees of freedom due to error. Well, where do we find that? Up here, we can see that the degrees of freedom due to error, which is the residual, is 96. So we can either type that in manually or we could use a formula. I'm just gonna go ahead and type in 96. So there are the two things we need to calculate our standard error of the regression. Let me zoom in a little bit further here. All right, so remember what we do? We just divide those. So we have the SSE divided by the DFE here, hit enter, and there we have the 1539736. Seven, now, what do we have to do? Remember, this is the MSE. So it's 1539736. We go up here. You'll see up here, 1539.736. That is the mean square error, which is the residual. I should probably type that in here because sometimes we call it residual, sometimes we call it error. Now what do we have to do? Well, remember, we take the square root. So equals square root of the MSE. And there we go. So this is the MSE, and this is the root mean square error. And that is 39.23946. If we go up to the top, we have 39.23946. So there is the standard error of the regression calculated by squaring the residuals, summing them up to get SSE. 96 is our degrees of freedom of the error term. That's N minus P minus one, which in this case is 100 observations minus three variables. So we have three variables minus one, and that gives us our 96, divide those two, we get the MSC, take the square root of the MSC, we get the root mean square error, which is the, another name for the standard error of the regression, which is up here. So remember, what does this mean? It is in the units of our dependent variable, which in this case is thousands of dollars for the home. So if I go back to the data here, we can see that the price of the homes ranges from $89,000 all the way up to $450,000. So what the standard error of the regression is saying is that if we were to walk sort of down the regression line and, and like hold our arms out, it's asking us or saying, how long would our arms need to be if we walk down the regression line to grab up almost all of our data points? So how far out in, on average, do the observations extend from the regression line, the regression plane, or some other multidimensional measurement? That's what we're saying here. If the standard error were lower, that would mean the observations were closer in towards the regression line, regression plane, or whatever it might be. 
if the standard error was larger, then of course the points would on average be further out from the regression line or the regression plane or whatever. It is literally measured in this case in thousands of dollars. So along the regression line or the regression plane, multidimensional space, on average, we can see that the standard error, it's like a distribution on the regression line, the standard error of that distribution is $39,239. That's the standard error of that distribution. And again, it's just a measure of how compact in towards the regression line our data points are. And since this is in the actual units of the dependent variable, we can compare models using this measure. So when we compare models based on their RMSE or the standard error of regression, it's very easy to use as a comparison because we can measure them sort of side by side. A lower standard error means the model fits the data better. So here we are back from Excel and we can see that our standard error of the regression under the RMSE column is 39.2395. 39.24 if we round up, and that's exactly what we calculated by hand in Excel when we used the residuals, and this did some summation and some division. So you can see how we did that. All right, so this was the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So that wraps up this video on the standard error of the regression. I'll see you again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.